Welcome to the module of theoretical abstractions in data flow analysis. What we have done so far is we have looked at lattices. We have looked at how data flow values can be modeled using lattices. We have seen how data flow values are merged. We have seen why lattice is a suitable uh, abstraction for modeling data flow values. We also talked about why uh, we can represent or why we can argue about, why we can talk about soundness of the information represented by data flow values using a lattice theoretic modeling. In this lecture, we want to talk about flow functions. These are the functions that compute data flow values. So we are going to talk about the properties of flow functions. We will see how do we define flow functions and then we'll talk about some properties of flow functions. Some of the properties will be discussed later. Uh, so, so the set of flow functions is a set of functions uh, which is essentially uh, fu functions from lattice L to L. So the argument, these are unary functions. They take one single argument which is a value in lattice L and produce a value in lattice L. So this flow function F is a set of all these functions and f contains an identity function this is to model empty statements that is statements which do not influence the data flow information it is important that f be closed under composition which means that whenever we compose two flow functions in f we get another function in f this is because we want to ensure that the cumulative effect of statements would generate the data flow information from the same set. That is, the cumulative effect of statements is also representable by the same uh, uh, set of functions. And then there is a minor requirement which says that our lattice L should be such that every value in L should be produced by a meet of application of certain functions. This is basically to ensure that we do not have spurious values in the lattice. We are going to talk about the monotonicity and distributivity of flow functions. These are two important properties in this particular lecture and in the next lecture we will talk about loop closure boundedness and separability. So let's first look at uh, what we've seen in bit vector data flow frameworks. So we've seen examples of available expressions analysis, reaching definitions analysis, live variables analysis, anticipable expressions analysis. We not looked at partial redundancy elimination, but uh, uh, all these analyses have flow functions of the following simple form where f of x, x capital X is a value in the lattice L, is defined as gen, some property is generated the set of data flow set of elements which satisfy this property that set is generated union x minus certain uh, elements are removed that do not satisfy the property so this this is a fixed form of the function that we have seen and we also seen that lattices are power sets with partial orders as uh, the subset or the superset relation and the information is merged using intersection or union. However, it turns out that this model of flow functions is not sufficient to describe a large number of interesting data flow analyses such as strong liveness analysis, pointer analysis, constant propagation, possibly uninitialized variables, etc. All these analyses cannot be expressed using constant gen and kill because the information, uh, the effect of a block does not depend only on the basic block alone. The local context alone is not sufficient. We need to also worry about the information that is coming from the outside. So we want to talk about properties of functions in general and the functions need not be of this form functions may be some general form we'll just talk about function f of x without specifying exactly how the function is defined so there are two important properties the first property that we talk about is monotonicity we want flow functions to be monotonic Monotonic, monotonicity implies order preservation, which means that the function preserves the order 
in its input. What that means is that if x can be safely is used in place of y, then f of x can be safely used in place of f of y. Meaning, formally, we have these two inputs x and y, and we are computing fx and fy by propagating these values, by giving these values as input to this flow function f. Now, in case it so happens that there is this relationship where x is weaker than y, then monotonicity guarantees that f of x is weaker than f of y. Meaning, smaller inputs will produce smaller output compared to a larger input which will produce a larger output. Uh, for mathematically, we say that a flow function f is monotonic if for all x, y in L, x weaker than y implies f of x is weaker than f of y. There is an alternative definition of monotonicity which says that f of x meet y is weaker than f of x meet f of y. Meaning, if we were to merge these data flow values before applying the flow function, that merge will be represented by the GLB of x and y, x meet y. If we were to apply that flow function to the merge, we are going to get a sound approximation if we were to apply the flow functions independently to the values and then take the merge. So, merging at intermediate points in shared segments of paths is safe. However, it may lead to imprecision. Uh, there is another property which is distributivity. So, we talked about merging giving a weaker value. What do we mean by merging? What we mean is we first merge the values then apply the flow function and compare it with first apply the flow function to independent values and then merge the result. We say that monotonicity ensures that we get a weaker result if we were to first merge and then apply the flow function. Okay? The other property which is distributivity is a stronger property. Distributivity says merging distributes over flow function or over function application. Meaning, it does not matter whether we merge the values first and then apply the flow function or whether we first apply the flow function and then merge the values, the results are bound to be, results are guaranteed to be identical if the flow function is distributed. So, what that means is we have x and y, we merge them, so we get f of x meet y. Alternatively, if we were to apply f of x first and then f of y. When I say first, I mean before application, before before merging, I am sorry. Uh, so, uh, for all you know, uh, f y is done first before f x because this merge operation, meet operation is commutative. It does not matter which uh, operand is computed first. The important point is function application is done before merging the values. If that happens, then the value is same as if the values were merged and then the flow function application were to happen. What it means is that intermediate points do not, merging at intermediate points do not lead to any imprecision. If there is a shared path, if there is a shared segment of path, then we do not need to traverse these paths independently. We can actually merge the information and traverse both the paths together and this does not lead to any imprecision. Uh, so, let us visualize monotonicity and distributivity. It is easy to see that distributivity is a stronger condition meaning any flow function that is distributive is by definition monotonic because monotonicity requires less than or equal to a weaker relationship uh, which includes distributivity whereas distributivity here uh, uh, requires the equality and therefore 
distributivity implies monotonicity although the converse is not true so let's look at uh, uh, the, uh, the let's let's try to visualize uh, monotonic and distributive flow functions so this is uh, a lattice and we are talking about some uh, uh, some arbitrary value x and y in the lattice there is a top and there is a bottom uh, we use meet semi lattice so the existence of bottom is guaranteed but the existence of top is not guaranteed but we can artificially add a value to make this lattice complete so we have x and we have y and we have a flow function f which will take x and y, uh, uh, and y and will give us f of x and f of y so if we were to merge these values x and y we get this value which necessarily has to be lower in the lattice i mean when i say necessarily lower it doesn't mean strictly lower because for all you know y is weaker than x in which case x meet y will be equal to y but pictorially we show it like this to allow for the possibility that x and y are unrelated so we get so these are the three elements and we are going to apply flow function f to these three elements and we will compare uh, the relationship between outputs uh, obtained by applying the flow functions in uh, and we are going to relate it to the relationship that exists between the input values x y and x meet y so when we apply uh, f to y assume that we get this value f of y if we apply x uh, if we apply f to x assume that we get some value f of x now we can merge f of y and f of x so this gives us f of x meet f of y if a flow function is distributive and hence monotonic then f applied to x meet y will give us this value it will be equal to f of x meet f of y however if we have a monotonic function which is not distributive then we if we apply f to x meet y we are going to get a value x f of x meet y which is weaker than f of x meet f of y so uh, the important observation is an important observation is that the flow functions in bit vector frameworks are distributed what does distributivity mean distributivity means merging before function application or merging after applica function application does not matter function application distributes over the merge so we have these flow functions f of x is equal to gen union x minus k f of y is equal to gen union y minus k now if we take the union as the merge operation then we have this f of x union y is gen union x union y minus k so we'll remove k from a union of these two which means that it is same as removing kill from x and removing kill from from y and then taking union and then this is gen so we can make two copies of gen we can have one gen with union of x minus kill and another gen with union uh, doing a union with y minus kill this is because gen union gen is same gen so which means that this part gen union x minus kill observe that gen union x minus kill is equal to f of x and this part gen union y minus kill gen union y minus kill is equal to f of y and thus it is easy to see that f of x union y is same of f of x union f of y in a similar manner we can show mathematically that f of x intersection y is same as is same as f of x intersection f of y however we have seen that constant propagation is non distributive we had a motivating example of constant propagation where we end up a value which is weaker we where we end up computing a value which is weaker than the ideal value 
representing the summary of uh, the information along all traces. Now, why does that happen? Observe here that there is something funny that's happening. Where A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 2 and then we are computing C is equal to A plus B. So, clearly the value of C will be 3. Now, here we swap the values of A is equal to 2. Now, here A was 1. Now, we have made A is equal to 2. B was 2. We have made B is equal to 1. And once again, we do A plus B. Plus is a commutative operation. It doesn't matter whether we do 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1. The result C still remains same. This is the result that we expect, but we do not get that result because we end up merging the data flow values here and we want to see why that happens. Why is it that merging causes imprecision in constant propagation? So, here is one path. We have A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2. So, this is our value of X. A is 1, B is equal to 2. C is 3 and D is top. This is along out of N1 to N of N2. And the Y value that we are talking about is the value that comes along this path where A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 1. So in Y we have A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 1. And now we explore the function application. If we, if we do function application for block N2, before merging the values meaning if we apply flow functions first and then merge the values then what do we get so we find that we are essentially doing f applied to 1 2 3 top and here f applied to 2 1 3 2 so f applied to 1 2 3 top will give us 1 2 3 and 2 this value of d comes from taking a product of a star b so d is equal to a star b so 1 star 2 gives us 2 c is equal to a plus b so 1 plus 2 gives us 3 a and b remain same now when we apply the flow function to this value in which the values of a and b have been swapped we compute d as a star b which continues to be 2 we compute C as A plus B which continues to be 3. So value of A and B remain unchanged. So A remains 2, B remains 1. So we get these values. And now when we take a meet of these, we find that 1 meet 2, we are going to do point wise meet. We are going to merge the value of A in this data flow value with the value of A in this data flow value. Value of B in this data flow value with the value of B here value of C here and value of C here, value of D here and value of D here. So 1 meet 2 gives us bottom. We know that is how the constant propagation lattice is. Any two different values, when we get two different values, we over approximate to say that any value is possible. We want, we want, to, we want that situation where exactly one value is possible. That's when we say a variable has a constant value. So 1 meet 2 gives us bottom. 2 meet 1 once again gives us bottom. 3 meet 3 gives us 3. 2 meet 2 gives us 2. Okay. So this is the result of f of x meet f of y. What happens if we were to merge the data flow values first and then apply the flow function? So this is what we are trying to do. We first take x meet y. So we take 1, 2, 3 top and 2, 1, 3, 2 and their meet. So 1 meet 2 gives us bottom. 2 meet 1 gives us bottom. 3 meet 3 gives us 3 and top meets 2 gives us 2. When we apply the flow function to this, we say, okay, I want to find out the value of d. And value of D is the product of A and B, but A and B themselves are not constants. So therefore, the value of D is also not constant. The value of D is also uh, uh, bottom. Similarly, we want to compute the value of C by adding these two values, but these two are bottoms, indicating any values are possible. So therefore, C also turns out to be bottom. 
it's easy to see from this example that uh, f of x y is strictly weaker than f x meet f y. Importantly, we do not have equality here, indicating that the flow function of constant propagation can be non-distributed. There can be distributed flow functions in constant propagation as well, and I leave it as an exercise for you to think of a situation where the flow function of constant propagation is distributive. On this slide, we have four examples where the flow functions are distributive and I invite you to find them out. If you are unable to find them out, please do ask questions in the uh, meeting session. But we want to, we have seen that constant propagation is non-distributive, but we want to understand why it is non-distributive. What is it that makes it non-distributive? What is it that causes this over approximation? So here is a simplified situation. A is equal to 2, B, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, and we have A is equal to 2, B is equal to 1, and we have C is equal to A plus B. And we want to see what happens in constant propagation. If we were to merge the data flow values, we end up getting all possible combinations of A equal to 1, A equal to 2, B equal to 1 and B equal to 2. A, why, why are we getting combinations? Because we want to add the value of A to value of B. So when I say we get combinations, we, what I mean is we end up picking any value of A from the possible values and add it to any value of B from the possible values. So let's look at some combinations. So we say A can be 1 and B can be 2. So we get A can be 1, B can be 2. So we get C is equal to A plus B as 3, which is a correct combination because A is equal to 1 here, B is equal to 2. There is an execution path along which this combination exists for the values of A and B. There are other combinations which is A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 1. Here we have A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 1. So we have this path along which this combination exists and for this combination also we get the value 3. This is also a valid combination. However, because of the effect of merging, we also end up considering these options A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1 and that gives us C is equal to 2. Observe that this combination is a wrong combination. This is mutually exclusive information. There is no execution path along which A is equal to 1 and B is equal to also 1. The two execution paths here are, if A is 1, then B is 2, if A is 2, then B is 1. But because we merge these values, we miss uh, the fact that A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1 is not possible. There is another combination, which is A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 2. Again, there is no such path along which A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 2. But because we are merging, we have to take all possible combinations. And now we have three values of C. One value is 4 here, then there is a value 2 here, and then there is a value 3 here. So it's no surprise that our flow function says that because multiple values for C are possible, therefore C is bottom. This is what makes constant propagation non-distributed. With this, we finish this lecture on flow functions. In the next lecture, we will talk about solutions of data flow analysis.